Hello, I'm going to walk you through a online energy transformation simulation that Google Fit Energy Transformations. Click on Energy Forms and Changes, and it'll take you to this Fit simulation. You click the Go button here, and it will download the Fit software or Java to your computer. You Press keep, you want to keep it, and then you open it like that. And I've already authorized Java at school. You'll have to authorize Java yourself, put in your username, password, and domain name. So this is now beginning to load the Java. And because Java can be dangerous, you have to authorize it. So I'll now load Java. It's worth the wait. This is a very good simulation. Fit does a lot of really great simulations. So it's about to start the simulation here. You've got to be patient here. Okay, we've got the general setup here. Make it full screen. We've got an iron, brick, water, and two heaters, a set of thermometers. We're going to put energy symbols in. Now, the energy represents the energy per unit volume at room temperature. And you can see iron has a lot of energy, brick, which is largely air, lots of holes, a little bit of energy in it, and water has a very high amount of energy per unit volume. We call this heat capacity. So water is one of these fantastic devices or things which flow, but they can also store a lot of energy per uh, unit volume or per degree Celsius. So I put the brick on this device. I'm going to put a thermometer on the brick. So it's at room temperature here. Thermometer here, the little arrow chains to show that we've actually measuring the temperature here. I haven't done anything to the brick heat at all, so the temperature's not going to change. I'm going to put the iron here. And I'm going to attempt to pick up one of these thermometers and place it on the iron. Ah, yes, it's turned grey. So it's now reading the temperature of the iron. There, so I can actually see it. Try and get it the same level so I can see the different temperature. Put in the water, seeing so it's the same temperature. The triangle's gone colored there. Put it there so you can see it. And then putting the last thermometer on the brick, you see it go grey. It's now a little triangle saying it's now measuring the temperature of the brick. I'm going to add some heat to the brick. The bricks for low heat capacity, so a small amount of heat is going to increase the temperature a lot. So, you, although the E's physically don't travel, it represents the heat energy or the energy transfer. So, this is heat energy transferred from the flame into the brick. So, you can see the temperature increases, which means the average kinetic energy of the particles in the brick increases. Now look at that energy increasing up here. The energy is showing you in the energy. It doesn't float up, but the air floating up has an energy with it. The air floating up is called convection. You now heat up the iron. The iron has a higher heat capacity, so the same amount of energy doesn't increase the temperature as much. We're going to heat up the iron to the same level. You can see we need more energy in the iron to heat it up in the simulation. It's very good. Different materials have different amount of capacity or, or require different amounts of heat to reach the same temperature. You can see it's beginning to heat up when it's above 
room temperature, the air heats up and the hot air rises, taking some energy away with it. Put the iron into the water, the iron's at a high temperature. Oh, that was a bit quick there. You can see the water temperature increase and the energy, the heat passes from the hotter iron into the colder water. We might try that again so the simulation is easier to see. So as we leave it, the temperature of both objects go towards the same as the energy travels from a hot object to a colder one. Work moving the iron back on and we'll start to heat it up again to see if we can increase the temperature. So energy goes is transferred from the plane into the iron and as it does so the temperature increases. You'll notice that the temperature of the block is slowly decreasing. Here's another unit of energy going on. This time we'll see if we can get a more dramatic effect by really increasing the block. You can see the waters are now above room temperature and some of the energy is lost due to convection. So the temperature really increase as you pump more energy into the block. So it's a large heat capacity, so it can hold a lot of energy per unit volume. Take it in, and now we'll watch the energy equilibrate. And here, the heat travels from a hot object, the iron, to a colder object. You can see the energy travel, and the iron cooling, and the water heating until they reach the same temperature, at which the same temperature the energy no longer travels between the two. We now take the water out of the iron block. Question, block out of the water. You can see the water change shape from the liquid. This time we'll cool it. So the energy, the heat, in the hot block now travels into the ice. Now the ice is at low temperature, but it's now increasing the heat and increasing the potential energy of the molecules in the water as it's turning into liquid. You can see the temperature decrease. Now, as the block reaches the temperature of the ice, there's no temperature difference, and the block stops cooling. Now, what we might do is we might pick the block up and put it in the water. This time, we will expect, rather than more energy to flow out of the block, we'll see the energy, well, water will flow into the block. And as the temperature of the water increases, the temperature of the water decreases. This will keep going to the uh, same temperature, and there's no energy flow. You can make this happen a little bit faster by pressing fast forward, which you're going to do here. Do now with fast forward is go over and I'll go and see if I can hit the brick a bit. You can see a lot more heat going in. It's got a lower heat capacity, the temperature increases, so there's the same temperature. As the block, but there's less heat energy in it. You can heat up really quickly. 
Now it's time to go over to energy systems. So there's a whole series of things. You have a water deposit, and that will turn a turbine, which will heat up the water. Here we've got the different types of energy now. So we're used to previously all thermal energy, but now we've got mechanical, electrical, thermal, light, and chemical. And of course, this just labels where in the diagram it is. We've turned on the water, and the gravitational energy as it drops turns. And you can see some of the energy is going up into the turbine, some of the energy is continuing forward, so it's not 100% efficient. And the energy turns the turbine, turns into electrical energy, which is blue here, and starts traveling along to heat up the water. I'll tell you a bit about electrical energy, it travels a lot faster than that. However, in this simulation is slow, so you can see it coming up so now all the energy of the water is taken away as it drops down we'll see if the temperature of the water increases so the little blue symbol there says it's i'm now measuring the temperature of the water so as the energy starts to heat up you can see the element is turning slightly orange as it's getting quite hot so that's actually some light energy hitting us but we haven't got that in the simulation We've turned off the tap. Well, now to let's get a cyclist. A cyclist has a lot of energy from their lunch, and that energy is going to go through, be converted, transferred, and transformed. So we'll start the cyclist off. I'm going to speed up here. You can see the heat energy in the water escaping as convection currents. So we've got some mechanical energy, and that mechanical energy will encounter some friction and things like that. It's going to go up and be transferred from the bike to the turbine. It hits the turbine, it will be transformed from mechanical to electrical. So you see the chemical energy transferred to mechanical energy and as it goes through here it will be transferred into electrical energy you can see the energy symbolized here as blue coming out here and as it hits the water it will start the element to grow hot you can see a little bit of heat energy going from the rider and we all know that happens that as you ride, you get hot. Ah, and all the chemical energy is gone. That's the limited thing. And it tells you to feed them. Let's see what happens. See more heat energy going. And the element is beginning to heat up a bit. Is it going red as it gets hotter? And as the energy increases, the water temperature increases. The, the person has got more energy units in him, he's happy, he keeps on cycling. It's a good simulation here. It's important to remember that the E is just a concept. You can replace the person with some sunlight, and look, there's a lot of light energy being transferred out. You can replace the turbine with a solar cell. And in this case, the light energy is being converted 100% efficient into electricity. In general, only one in four E's actually gets converted into electricity. The energy increases, so it gets converted into thermal energy on the L1 and begins to heat the water. Then replace the water with an energy efficient light bulb and see what happens. So the electrical energy will start 
to generate the light in the light bulb. So when it generates light, we should see light energy start to leave the light bulb. Is there anything else? I wonder. So the electrical energy going in and being converted to light. Now obviously that some goes out, but it goes out in all directions from the light bulb. So the light bulb glowing yellow shows energized. You can see some energy is not all light, it's actually heat energy. And you know that if you touch a light bulb, it's quite hot. Very good simulation overall. Lots of things to explore. So thank you very much for watching.